So before I start, I just have uh, one thing to say. This book as Sir Star introduced it. It is related to uh, medical field. So please don't get zoned out. I want to say one thing. Even, even you all have not read this book. You all have read a similar story and you all know a similar story. So when I read it, when I present it, you all will be able to relate to it. And one more thing, I have a small question in the end. So I think uh, to answer that question, you all have to follow it. Hmm. So I'm Dr. Hema Malini from SRTR GMC Amba Jogai. Uh, I would like to start my book club activity by starting off with the author who wrote the book, Jeremy N. Smith. He is a graduate of Harvard College and University of Montana. Jeremy has returned for the Atlantic, Discover, Slate and the New York Times. He and his work has been featured in CNN, NPR, NBC Nightly News, The Today Show and Wired. So Jeremy uh, speaks frequently to diverse uh, national audiences including Apple, Google, the National Academy of Sciences, the Center for Global Development, the Society of Environmental Journalists and so on. So he is the author of three acclaimed narrative books, non-fiction books, namely Breaking and Entering, Growing a Garden City and Epic Measures. So uh, my presentation will be on Epic Measures. Epic Measures is a remarkable chronicle of one of the great, greatest quests of our time, the groundbreaking program to answer the most essential question for humanity, how do we live and die, and the visionary ma mastermind behind it. Medical doctor and economist Christopher Murray began the global burden of disease studies to gain a truer understanding of how we live and how we die. While it is uh, one of the largest scientific projects ever attempted, as breathtaking as the first moon landing or first uh, or, or human genome project, the questions it answers are meaningful for every one of us. What are the world's health problems? Who do they hurt? How much? Where? And why? Murray argues that ideal existence isn't simply the longest, but the one lived well with least illness. Until we can accurately measure how people live and die, we cannot understand or what to do much to improve it. A uh, charismatic and controversial health maverick has made enemies and some influential friends too, including Bill Gates, who gave Murray a 100 million grant. From ranking countries' healthcare systems to unearthing the shocking reality that world governments are funding developing countries at only 30% of the potential maximum efficiency, when it comes to health, Epic Measures introduces a visionary leader whose unwavering determination to improve global health standards has already changed the way the world addresses issues of health and wellness, sets policies and distribute funding. So this was, you know, the gist of the whole thing. Now, let me uh, explain it to you in the narrative form, like in the point, uh, from the point of view of the author, how he starts the book and how he ends the book. So the story starts with a family traveling in a Land Rover, a vehicle, Land Rover crossing the Sahara Desert, heading to Niger's capital, Niamey, to a hospital in town of Diffa. These are all name of the places. So, who were in the family? First thing was John, who was the dad, who was the head of the family, and mom, Annie. Dad, John was a doctor, he was a cardiologist. Mom was a microbiologist, and they had three children. And the hero of the story, that is like, initially only we told Chris, Chris Murray he was just 10 years old when this travel was happening when the story was started so his uh, they uh, he had elder brother and uh, elder sister also who traveled along why did they travel because uh, the dad John card, uh, cardiologist no? he had a one year sabbatical so what they what John chose to chose to do was to go to places where uh, they did not have healthcare, to provide healthcare. He did not go alone. He did not take his peers. Instead, he took his family. Hmm. So they went to this place. What did they find? They spotted a deserted hospital with no electricity, literally no electricity and water, but with lot of patients who needed healthcare. 
so uh, what happens he didn't have any other uh, peers to help him no other doctors to help him so what does he do he becomes the chief doctor he becomes the surgeon and he microbiologist his wife becomes the head nurse they take up these positions to run the hospital effectively and uh, what does this 10 year old chris uh, chris do he becomes the pharmacist you know drug distributor and uh, the elder brother of chris becomes the ambulance driver what is the ambulance their own land rover that is the ambulance so with very few essential medicine they do not go just like that they know they are going to provide health care all that so with very few essential medicines they reach that place very few much patients easily they get exhausted and after that uh, few incidences also happen which makes you think okay that i leave it for you to go read maybe this will you know kindle your mind okay later on they notice increase of cases of malaria malaria is a disease everybody knows hmm they just did not notice malaria is increasing they also noticed that in that particular hospital patients who get admitted not because of malaria also tend to acquire malaria so then they started to think how this is happening so then what did they do they started to do a small research on it and what did they find they found that for all the sick patients what is being given even anybody who gets admitted in a hospital due to a sickness it will be uh, multivitamins will be given okay so multivitamin uh, which had iron rich uh, rich iron content what they found was because all the patients irrespective of they have malaria or not they are taking iron tablets so what is this malaria parasite plasmodium it is getting attracted to the rich iron content in the blood so which is causing malaria this is what they discovered okay so the family goes to a place healthcare needs are there they provide healthcare needs not just provide healthcare needs they explore they research also what do they do they publish the article in the lancet so now are you able to relate to something here hmm. okay hmm so the family also publishes their findings in prestigious british journal the lancet later uh, chris murray grows he joins harvard and uh, whom does he meet he meets another friend of his like alan lopez alan lopez was already working in who by that time in geneva so uh, alan lopez had this um, quest in his mind that there is somewhere a uh, reporting mistake is going on like number of deaths are being reported wrongly and the same question was there in chris murray's mind also a 10 year 10 year old boy he goes to work he is not playing like he is not doing meaningless stuffs he is going and serving the people so his mind then only started to think in a different way so uh, do uh, similar different thought arises in his mind number of deaths are being reported wrongly so what do i do for it hmm. and they both be like minded people they both started working together so chris this one point is very important chris strongly believed if reporting of the disease is not right allocation of resources won't be right if reporting is not done rightly real disease burden in a particular country cannot be known if we do not know where we are heading to how do we even comment on which route to take so he not only finds that data is insufficient but also finds that data is skewed matlab manipulated to justify ineffective work and funding also finds a lot of discrepancies between un data and who data so he developed a tool to measure global burden of disease using dali dali means disability adjusted life years which is calculated by adding years of life lost due to premature mortality and years of uh, life lost due to disability i will just explain it very shortly so he is uh, he is developing a tool to measure the global burden of disease by what dali what is dali disability adjusted life life years and uh, through what is he uh, measuring it using two parameters those two parameters are years of life lost okay so um, that to that is due to premature mortality meaning if you were uh, if you had hmm you your life expectancy is for example 86 years but you die before 70 then 16 years is lost means premature mortality is happening understood that's called premature mortality mortality means death and years of life lost due to disability 
years of life loss due to disability means during your lifetime you develop a disability might be anything stroke depression or anything so due to that disease how many lives years of life you lose is called years of life lost so by adding these two parameters we uh, get disability adjusted life years so he used this to uh, you know to measure global burden of disease this is what he did so by this time chris murray was a part of who since he pointed out mistakes of influential people he was pushed out of who this is what happens when you point out influential people you will not be there not be there in the system so this should not you know demotivate you or something hmm. his thoughts were very clear and his actions were right so what happened bill gates enters this picture here so what does he do he grants him 100 million dollars for this project for whatever project he is he has proposed hmm. so this is the uh, whole of the story in a narrative point of view also coming to my learnings and reflections from a doctor's point of view i understand how to really help humanity how to work and benefit larger number of people we need to know how every disease and illness impacts on a larger scale for example my learning i would like to say if i see 10 patients with anxiety one day and uh, uh, in a week i see i see 30 patients and i keep re I repetitively seeing so uh, sh should my work be superficial that i see the patient diagnose right diagnosis right treatment right follow up no i should be able to think okay these much of patients i'm seeing on a day uh, on a monthly basis or weekly basis why this repetition is happening and is this having an impact globally also nationally also so i should be able to think and always my personal learnings i should rec i should be able to record the data hmm and um so that's the thing so i should be able to see a larger picture of the scenario as to what disease burden it can have and how to minimize it since i am from the department of community medicine who were uh, which works directly in policy making too reading this book was an eye opener for me instead of treating a specific disease we need to treat people and their ever changing problems this might actually help in you know for tomorrow's exercise also for our thinking instead of treating specific disease we need to treat people and their ever changing problems john murray was the dad of chris he states that in the book in the story chris got addicted to working hard he never ha have to be pushed as a dad he didn't have to do much to make chris to put in, in the right path he got addicted to working hard so what was my learning from this line if we want to achieve big then work put in for the same must be bigger is what i learned so another learning was about the significance of data and right reporting as it guides us to seek solution to the problem also most importantly makes it easier to find the problem in its first place hmm one un, uh, anonymous quote man cannot discover new oceans unless he has the courage to lose the sight of the shore i learned that if we don't come out of our comfort zone new learnings and achievements need to keep waiting it need to be kept waiting so another anonymous quote never underestimate the power of thought it is the great path greatest path to discovery so directing thoughts to positivity and productivity makes it much easier to reach our goals so yeah coming to the question was the whole story relatable little bit how except amrit sir anybody can answer uh, dada <laughs> okay hmm answer everybody knows the answer tell me was it relatable like how relatable. yeah comfort zone part relatable right was the story relatable a family goes to a place where they they need healthcare needs very right i also felt the same initially only when i started reading the book i started to feel everything so relatable and and in the middle they they go they do the research publish the same article in lancet also so everything was very relatable i think it will be a very good read for you also it's not like only medical people can relate to this book no anybody can relate to this book the author who wrote was not a medical professional so i think it will be a very nice read if you all try to give it a read i would like to conclude with this quote by carl sagan somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known thank you, thank you.